Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 19, titled Blood and Roses. We are so, so close to Sunny Amnesia. So close. I can see it. He's just got to blow up first, and then we're going to get there. I can see the explosion on the horizon. (laughs) It originally premiered on April 1st, 1988. It is written by Dick Wolf. Surprise, surprise. He wrote every episode this season and then or put his name on every episode somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and it is directed by sorry, let me make sure I get this name right. George Mendeluk. And he's got one more episode coming this season. So and that's that'll be it for him. So we have a rookie vice director for this episode. And it seems like maybe he should have watched the series a little bit. You know, maybe started <laughs> season one. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Worked his way through. I feel like maybe the storyline has been done before. Well, shouldn't Dick Wolf have known that? He's been on since the beginning, he right? He doesn't put his name on it. <laughs> well, he didn't I'm actually looking, read. We're kind of hinting around and we'll talk. Definitely more about it. That this episode is a lot like season one, episode ten, titled "Give a Little, Take a Little." And I'm looking back at the writers and directors, so we have no crossover here. So, so they really just ha- they really just don't know. <laughs> just not that creative. I guess. <laughs> just not aware. Before, before we've seen Gina's, like I swear I've done this before. <laughs> All right, John, we're back on a normal schedule. Everything's fine. Everyone breathe the sigh of relief. It was only one week that we didn't have music. We're back to normal. What do you got for us this week? So I have one band that you guys haven't heard me talk about and two people you have. Let's start out with the band I haven't talked about. The song Sweetest Smile by Black. Black is not a band, actually. Black is a person. Black (laughs) is the stage name for English singer-songwriter Colin Verncombe. He pretty much started out on the punk rock scene, but achieved mainstream success uh, mostly in the pop in the late 80s. His most notable hit was the international hit Wonderful Life that he released in 1987. So to give you a little history, uh, he had released several albums by 1985 under the stage name Black, but he'd struggled to gain traction. It wasn't until he recorded Wonderful Life on a small record company called Ugly Man Records uh, (laughs) that he was able to get noticed by A&M Records, who would launch his international career. And they would do that by just relaunching Wonderful Life over and over again. (laughs) <laughs> At first, Vern Combe found it hard to top Wonderful Life. He actually released a song called Everything Coming Up Roses, and it just completely flopped. And uh, Sweetest Smile was actually kind of his first hit after uh, Wonderful Life. And he would release a re-release, Wonderful Life, in 87, before selling 2 million copies of his record Comedy in 88 and his record Black in 91. After that, he would at least one more album before taking a hiatus from 93 to 99. Uh, when he would come back from his hiatus, he would start by releasing music under Colin Verncombe. Uh, and then when that wouldn't work, he would go back to releasing music under Black. And he actually just he's continued releasing music through the 2000s and the 2000 teens, all the way until he was involved in a traffic accident on January 10th, 2016, near Cork Airport in Ireland. Uh, it was a pretty bad accident. He had to be placed in a medically induced coma. And about two weeks later, he would die of his injuries. Damn, we have in the music segment. There has been so many people that have died because of cars or motorcycles. Someone should really step in on cars and motorcycles. They're the real killers. They can only make a car like a driverless car, you know, that drives you. (laughs) Yeah, it just takes the people out of the equation. It takes you around, takes the best route. You don't have to think about it. Then you can be strapped into like one of those race car seats. Oh, yeah. I'd be totally down with that. In an unrelated note. Out here in Arizona, Google's going to start their own self-driving taxi service. So everybody watch out. (laughs) All 
Our next song is Juris Game by Tommy Shaw. Tommy Shaw first appeared in the episode Glades with his song Gun uh, Girls with Guns. If Tommy Shaw's name sounds familiar, that's because he is Tommy Shaw of the band Styx. Mmm, okay, that's why. He was born in Alabama. He started in music and bands in Chicago as part of one band called The Smoke Ring, and then later ms funk so after ms funk disbanded he was invited to join sticks uh when the band needed a guitar a guitarist on short notice for a major tour coming up the band's fame would skyrocket and he would become a permanent member of the band and actually start contributing he, he was the contributor on this on songs fooling yourself renegade which is probably the best one blue collar man uh, and he actually sang the leads on too much time on my hands, which is probably my second favorite stick song. <laughs> but after their power ballad Babe hit number one, keyboardist and lead singer Dennis DeYoung had to push the band in the mainstream and make more theatrical performances. More theatrical than sticks? I didn't think that could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're talking full on like Lion King costumes and <laughs> they would stay together for about two more albums before Shaw would leave and go solo. He would be involved with the super group Damn Yankees and pretty much release solo stuff and do other stuff in music. Nothing that will ever measure to good old sticks. It's all Dennis DeYoung's fault. Why did he have to <laughs> insist on makeup and costumes? Can't you see? Just trying to have fun. We had too much time on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> so our last song is Winners and Losers by Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop also, well, well Iggy Pop, born James Newell Osterberg Jr., uh, <laughs> also known as the godfather of punk. His first appearance, we talked about him with his song Real Wild Child in the episode Kill Shot. Iggy Pop is the legendary lead singer of the Stooges. He's most notably known for his song Seek and Destroy, I Want to Be Your Dog, Lust for Life, Passenger, and Real Wild Child, which was our previously featured song. So I'm just going to kind of highlight things with him because we've we already talked about him back in Kill Shot. So just going to kind of highlight. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010. He played in a bunch of high school bands. One of them was called the Iguanas, mm -hmm. which is what led to hit the adaption of his stage name. Iggy. He played in a lot of blues bands as a drummer before dropping out of the University of Michigan, moving to Chicago, and that's when the Stooges would come about. From 68 to 74, be with the Stooges. They would eventually disband because of Iggy's growing heroin addiction. That's when Iggy Pop's solo career would begin, and well, that's when David Bowie would basically save Iggy's career because the two of them would become best pals. They would hang out, try and get clean together. Bowie and Iggy would write music together, like they wrote the songs China Girl, Tonight, and Sister Midnight together. Damn. Yeah, yeah. They're good old pals. So, and, and they even did some tours in Europe and Berlin. And because Iggy just kept making music, he even, uh, I mean, all the way until the 2000s, he's still making music and still a part of of the music scene. So some stuff that you might not know, Iggy Pop was featured in soundtracks for such great movies like Crocodile Dundee 2, <laughs> uh, Train Spotting, Lock, Stock, and Smoking Barrels, uh, and Two Smoking Barrels, the movie Repo Man, and a bunch of crap I've never seen. Uh, he was an actor in The Color of Money, just like one of our guest stars, Paul Herman. He was also in The Crow, City of Angels. He was in the Rugrats movie. Did you know Iggy <laughs> Pop was in the Rugrats movie? <laughs> he was in Coffee and Cigarettes. He was also in the in the movie Snow Day. So if you're, you know, part of that Rugrats crowd, you'll probably enjoy <laughs> Snow Day. He was also in the movie Dead Man with Johnny Depp. Apparently him and Johnny Depp are pretty close friends, too. That's probably not surprising, right? Those two. <laughs> and he acted in the movie Tank Girl. Mm. Actually, half decent. This is my favorite part, though. The TV shows that he's appeared in. Adventures of Pete and Pete <laughs> and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. 
Man, he's got a serious Nickelodeon connection. Yeah, he's really up in the, <laughs> Which is strange, because yes. why would anyone from Nickelodeon know who he was like yeah. at the time, like being on their show? Does he even have kids? <laughs> I don't know. And your last bit of trivia, in the movie Velvet, Velvet Goldmine, Ewan McGregor portrays Kurt Wilde, a character which was loosely based on Iggy Pop, which is probably why I've never heard that movie. I, I've seen that movie. It makes a lot of sense that that's supposed to be based off of him. There's a lot of drugs consumed in that movie. Mm. Here's all I know is that if you want to get ahead in music, Iggy Pop is someone that you should talk to. He can help you out with that. He's worked with David Bowie. He's very successful on his own, too, not just for the band, but his solo stuff, too. So Dan Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> Don Swayze, sorry. Don, yeah. Don, Don, Don Swayze and um, John Travolta's brother. Joey. Joey. Joey Travolta. Get a hold Joey. of Iggy Pop. How did you how did you forget about Joey Travolta? <laughs> he looks just like John Travolta. I looked at him when he was young. It's creepy. He does. All right. So, John, as always with the music, I mean, you started off strong with the music and mentioning <laughs> Don Swayze. <laughs> so... <laughs> but the music comes, and of course, we're always caught off guard with what comes up in that section. Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode, because I think me and Melissa may not see eye to eye on this episode. Let's Uh-oh. go give our final thoughts on this one. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Be sure to check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the other ways that you can contact us too Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, S- Snapchat. I want to say, I don't know. We got pretty much anything and everywhere. You know how to find us. Go hey, with well, the heat. instant message. <laughs> <laughs> Our GeoCity site is still running. You can get us on <laughs> Yahoo Messenger. <laughs> on that website, there's also a tab for support. We would love your support. Support step number one, email us, contact us. Let us know what you think of this episode. Step number two, go to your podcaster or podcatcher platform of choice and leave a review. Just give us the highest rating, no matter what it is. Just give us the highest rating that it is. Five plums. Go for it. Give them all. <laughs> but don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Instead of writing a review, write in there what you would say to Don Swayze and <laughs> Joey Travolta. What kind of show should they make together? Come up with a show pitch that we should have for Don Swayze and Joey Travolta. I think there's still an opportunity here. John has hit on something. There's still an opportunity. Let's get him in a room. Let's pitch them some ideas. Only, only if we can get D- Johnson to join in. <laughs> Support step number three, check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. We'd love your support. Go check out what our future plans are of the show and see what else we want to work on. So we encourage you to go check that out. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal.